Now unlike the previous training videos on securing your document where you secured it with a password or after you secured it with the password you want to be able to let people who didn't have a password the ability to just read your document only. In this training video we want to go at a deeper level here. We want to be able to ac actually restrict access to this document by user. Where in the previous training video just by password it wasn't by user it was by anybody who had the password whether they stole it or not. Also when we're talking about information rights management where this information you see before you I want the ability to manage its rights to who can view it who can't. Remember how you set that up in the other training video if you've watched it where you said okay if you don't have a password I'll allow you to read it only. Well that's everybody in the world if they didn't have a password everybody could read it. That's not managing my information here to who has the access to read it. So the restrict access here allows me to set this to define who the user has access to the document here at three levels. And those three levels are the first one is read only. So I could say Bob, only Bob has access to read this document. The second level is change. Change means that they can read it edit it and save it as another document. So if they edit it, they can't save it within the document and overwrite. It forces them to save it as another document. And finally, full control. Full control allows them to read, edit, save changes, and even print it. And again, this is all defined by user or user authentication. And we need a little help from Microsoft to do this. Microsoft has a free trial service which could terminate at any time, but why it's there, it will restrict this access by user. And that includes signing up for a .NET Passport what this .NET Passport does is it authenticates the user. And we want to do that. We want to say, look, Bob in New York, you're my buddy for several years. I want to make sure it's you that I'm assigning access to this document for read-only or to change it or do full control. So when he signs up for .NET Passport, he authenticates himself. I can go ahead and choose him and say he's the only one that has access to this document. And there I go. I'm now being able to manage my information, restricting who has access to it and what they can do once they're in it. Now you can read more about this as we go along, so let's go ahead and get started. Come up to the Developer tab and click on the Developer. If you don't have the Developer tab, then you want to click on the Office Logo button, come down to Word Options, over where it says Popular, the category, right here, you want to check the box Show Developer tab in the ribbon. So I'm going to click Cancel, so there we are, Developer tab. Now you want to protect the document, go down to Restrict Formatting and Editing, which brings up that familiar task pane if you've already watched the previous training videos. However, down at the bottom, I want to click on the, the link, Restrict Permission. Then it gives me a little warning saying, look, introducing the Information Rights Management Service. This is a free trial service that you can use, but if you choose to use this, you must use a Windows Live ID or a .NET Passport uh, to use the service so I can authenticate and actually identify it's you that has the actual rights to this document when setting it up and allowing other users to also have access to it, and in which case they also need a Windows Live ID as well. Now, getting a little geeky on you or technical, all it means is that, look, I don't have a server and I want to use Microsoft Server to be able to allow and identify who these other people are to have access to my document. Okay. In any case, do you want to sign up for this trial service? I'll go ahead and say yes and then click next. And it says in order to download a rights management account certificate to view restricted content, you must have a .NET Passport like I was talking about. And this wizard uses your .NET Passport to create the certificate. So if you have a Hotmail or MSN account, you already have a .NET Passport. Do you have a .NET Passport? If yes, then go ahead and continue on. If you have no clue what I'm talking about, no I don't, and I want to register for one now, then go ahead and select no and continue on and they'll sign you up for it. Okay, so which way do we go? For this part of the training video, let's assume that you don't have one and you want to sign up for it. So go ahead and click Next. Opens up the web page here, takes us online, and it says, here we go, we need to sign up for a Windows Live ID or a .NET Passport. Go ahead and fill out all the information that you have here. And then once you signed up, I'm going to close out. Then what I can do is I can go ahead and select Yes and then move on. Okay, it's going to ask you for your uh, .NET Passport, which usually is your email address and your password. So I'm going to go ahead and type mine in. Okay, and then just go ahead and click Sign In. And we're continuing on to be assigned our Rights Management Account Certificate. So I'll type in the email address that I used to sign up for .NET Passport. Click Next. 
And then what type of certificate do you want to download? The standard, the certificate enables you to create, view, and use restricted content on your computer. If you want to continue to use restricted content after the certificate expires, you can renew it. Or temporary, the certificate enables you to open restricted content for a limited time. And you just want to select this option if you need to use the certificate only once or if you're using a public computer. After the certificate expires, you can continue to view and use restricted content that's already open on the computer. But if you want to create or open other restricted content, you must run this wizard again to download another certificate. You probably want to go with the standard, but since this is just a one-time temporary thing for me as far as this training video is concerned, I'll go ahead and use temporary, then click next. Okay, the wizards downloaded the temporary restricted management account certificate to the computer. After the certificate expires, you can continue to view and use restricted content that is already open on the computer. If you want to create or open other restricted content, you must run this wizard again to have another certificate. So it's temporary. I won't be able to, um, once I restrict this document here, not have access to it unless I run this wizard again. So I'm going to go ahead and click Finish. Then this little thing pops up here. I'm going to go ahead and continue here and check restrict permission to this document. If for some reason you decide to click cancel or you lose the box here, you can always go back to your task pane because you started the wizard, you set it up, and you click on restrict permissions, it brings the box back up again. And we can restrict the permission to this document. Now, if I want to go ahead and give somebody just the read only, it's all by email here. So example, someone at example.com, or you can click on the read button, and this pulls from your address book if you have Microsoft Outlook, and there it is. Homer Simpson, I can double click on him. He's added down below for read only, and I can click OK. And you can see, just they can only read it. They cannot change, print, or copy the content. How about changing the content? Click on change, and we'll do Wilberforce Humphreys, and click OK. After we add them here, let's go ahead and click on more options. And you can see here that I've got full control. That's me. Part of the reason why I needed to sign up for .NET Passport because I'm the one who wants to come in here and be able to make full control changes and access. Now I can change these on the fly here by clicking on the drop down arrow and say now um, Wilberforce has full control. And I can change it back to maybe just at the change level. And then it's pretty cool down here. If they don't already have access to it by you know the read or the change, we can allow this user to print the content. We can allow them to, with read access, to copy the content, access content programmatically. And then it's pretty cool down below. You can actually, when this document, the permissions for the user expires on. And we'll say it expires on Monday when somebody has access to it. So for example, if I come up here, you can see now that everybody I select has additional permissions for these users. So if I click OK, and you can see up here it says restricted access, but permission is currently restricted. Only specified users can change the content. What if I want to change permissions? Go ahead and click on it. It brings it up because remember I have full control and I can go back to more options and of course make more changes here. And this is going to apply for everybody. So then when I'm finished, all I have to do is go ahead and save my document, and that's it. Finally, you can actually mark this as final, and what it does is when you mark this document as final, it doesn't allow the users to come up here and make changes to it. It freezes it, so no buttons are available up here. So that's under the Office Logo button, and this is optional above and beyond the Restrict Access. Coming down to Prepare, and then saying Mark is Final, lets the readers know that the document is final, and I'm making it read only. So I'm going above and beyond that, even though they all have varying permissions. Showing you what this feature does here. Click on Mark as Final, and then click OK. And then finally, the little prompt says, when it's marked as Final, it turns off all the um, typing editing commands. And then look down here, and this is what the button means, Marked as Final. So if you see that in the status bar in a Word document, it's Marked as Final. If you see this little button right here, this document contains a permission policy. And then you can view this little icon right here, which means that this little button contains a permission policy. You can click on it, and it tells me you are currently authenticated to view this document as me, and this is what the permissions I have. I can go ahead and click on Change User, and then I can select one of the following user accounts to create or open with restricted permissions. And if I want to use an account that's not listed below, I can always click Add. But this is me. This is the only one that I have, and it's tied to the Windows Live ID. So when Bob opens this up, he'll have his own Windows Live ID tied to this document that will allow him his restricted access to it, or in this case, uh, Homer and Wilberforce Humphreys. And you can see up here, um, I have no control over it. However, somebody can easily 
unrestrict the access to this document or not have it marked as final as you can see down here and the way they can do that is just coming up under the office logo button coming down to prepare and then clicking on mark as final again and then it gives them all access to it so they can go ahead and do some formatting here thanks for watching hey as a quick reminder if you like my video please give it a thumbs up you can also click on me and subscribe to my channel get notified of the latest videos and for only two dollars a month you can have access to all my microsoft office training videos